Welcome back. In a previous episode, we took a look at this Acer Aspire 1 netbook, and in that particular video, we tried to put a version of GNU Linux called Ubuntu onto it to see if we could turn it into a mini little speedy Linux-based laptop. And in that video, we, we ran Linux off of a USB flash drive, and it wasn't really the speediest thing, possibly because we're only using one gigabyte RAM in this thing. But I mentioned that I would try to load it onto the hard drive and possibly down the road make a part two video, which we'd revisit the machine here with more memory and possibly an SSD. It's a common thing to do. People seem like they have pretty good results with it. So I felt kind of confident in doing that. Well, between now and then, I looked around my lab here, and I found that I had a 750 gigabyte hard drive. And I said, you know what? It's just sitting here. It's not any different speed-wise, but it does have more room on it. Perhaps I'll throw that in here and see if that works. Well, in between doing that and looking around the machine, I happened to notice that the SD card slot, which is just over here on this side, had some gunk built up in it. And I thought, you know, I better clean that in case I want to use that for something, right? So I took the laptop apart, Keep in mind, it was in my lab here on my anti-static mat. I had my uh, shoes and socks off, so I was barefoot in the floor, not to generate any static electricity, just a common procedure that I do. And uh, I got the thing put back together, and it didn't do anything. Uh, when you turn the power button on, it lights up blue. The fan spins up, and uh, you can hear the hard drive cranking for a second, but you don't have any display on the screen. So I said, uh-oh, uh what happened here? So then I thought, well, maybe I'll take it back apart again. Maybe something came loose, like the monitor connection, anything like that. Now, keep in mind, that's all over here on this side of the board. I didn't really touch anything over there. We just worked on the other side. Nothing. Nothing was loose. Everything seemed like it was legit. So I put everything back together again. Same issue. And then I thought, uh-oh, well, now what happened? Well, I did some research online, and some people said, perhaps something shorted out on you. And I said, well, that's a possibility. So I took the thing apart again, looked everything over, looked at all the USB ports, every, nothing. And there's actually a little connection between here and here. It's actually a long uh, piece of circuit board, essentially, with two connectors on the end of it. And that just connects the left half and the right half of the motherboard together. So I took that off to completely eliminate half the board there. Same thing, didn't do anything where I wanted it to do. Okay, threw it all back together again. Now I said, now what could it be? So now I did some further research and they said, you possibly need to update the BIOS. You might have had an issue with it. It might have went corrupt. All right, well, anything's possible, right? Well, to do that, you got to download the BIOS file, a program called Flash It. It all kind of comes together when you go on the Acer's website. It's all in a little package. So I downloaded the package. I took the files. You have to rename one of them. I did all these different things. Threw it onto a USB flash drive, plugged it in. Didn't work. All right, why didn't it work? Uh, I should back up and say to get it to go, you have to hold down function and escape and hit the power button. And what should happen is, is the power button should start blinking, and that means it's reading off the USB drive. That didn't work. So I said, well, well what, what do I have to do? Probably doesn't have the right uh, file type. You have to reformat the flash drive it's probably in FAT32 or NTFS. You have to put it into FAT, okay? But you can't just do that in Windows. You have to go into the command prompt and type the command out to do that. So I did that, and it took a while. I mean, I let it go overnight because it was just that slow, and it was late enough in the night where I couldn't really work on it any longer. Woke up the next morning, and it said that the uh, drive was too large to do that. It was an 8-gig drive. And then I went, oh, well, I don't have a smaller than 8 gigabyte drive lying around. Oh, wait, yes, I do. I have a card reader and I have a 4 gigabyte SD card. Let's give that a shot. Well, that successfully went to the FAT allocation system. No problems. I got the files transferred over to it. No problems. I plugged it in. Doesn't read. I get right to the same place I was before. Oh, man. Now what do I do? Well, they said maybe the... RAM chip went bad. Well, luckily I have a similar a similar size, similar speed RAM chip. We'll throw that in there, see what happens. That didn't do anything. Maybe it's the 750 gig hard drive I put in the whole time. Wouldn't that be funny? Nope, that wasn't it either. So now I'm like, now what the heck do I do? 
Well, some people said maybe it's because the battery is out of calibration. Yeah, that's actually a thing. Once you get into Windows, you can recalibrate the battery, so on and so forth. Try doing this whole thing over again without the battery attached. Just keep the power cable plugged in. Nope, that didn't do anything either. Well, I feel like I'm out of options now at this point, folks. So, really, what else could there be left to do? We're going to bake the motherboard. That's right, you heard me correct. We're going to bake the motherboard. Uh, I currently have my oven in the kitchen set to 385 degrees Fahrenheit. And we're going to take the motherboard out of this. I'm going to remove any kind of stickers or anything that could possibly melt, I guess you could say, uh, in that regard. We're going to take it all off. We're going to stick it on a baking sheet, throw it in the oven for eight minutes. And, uh, of course, you know, you might want to crack a window or anything like that. There could be fumes to come off of this. And when it's done, I'm going to open up the door of the oven. And uh, we'll let it sit in there for a good 20 minutes just to cool down. Because you don't want to handle this thing at all. And we're going to put it back together and see if it works. Now, I'll mention why this might work. If we take a look at this RAM chip here, there's no solder connections for any of these chips. That's because they're all soldered in from the other side. These are assembled in a machine where basically the board's heated up. Uh, it's, it's called BGA, ball grid array. There's a little grid underneath these chips. And in that grid, there's little tiny balls of solder. And they put the chip on top of this. When they bake it, all those little balls reflow into, into liquid solder, essentially. And just the slight gravity that's on this is very slight. This thing should just press right down in. And, you know, that's how it connects. And that's how pretty much every processor, you know, memory chips, it's a very common way to assemble these things nowadays. Especially when there's so many little connections that have to be made in such a small space. So what we're trying to do is reflow the solder to those chips. Maybe something came loose. Anything's possible. It's worth a shot. The thing's dead at this point anyway. I've already exhausted all the other options. Really, other than replacing the motherboard with a known working one is the only thing we could do at this point. And considering those are like $50 online on eBay, I don't really want to put the money into it. Because if we're already talking about upgrading the memory and putting an SSD into this thing, that's the money I could spend towards that stuff. Uh, an SSD is 50 bucks on its own anyway. And considering this thing's only $300 new back in 2012, it's really not me worth putting any, any money into, essentially, let alone a new motherboard. So I'm going to go ahead and just take this thing apart real quick. I'll show you what that motherboard looks like. And here's the case and everything pulled apart. All that I'd have to do now is just take this particular part of the board out. So we have to remove that uh, little edge connector card I mentioned earlier and whatever other little pieces are on here. Um, I should mention too, I already tried desoldering the battery just to make sure the BIOS was completely reset. That didn't do anything either. Uh, just for the sake of not baking the battery, I'm gonna remove that too as well. Here's the loose board, still have the battery attached. We'll take that out in a moment. But any of these labels over here, I'm gonna try to remove because that may be just wise to do that because that residue from the uh, adhesive behind there may start to smoke up and stink and everything i mean it's going to have a general smell to it anyway so i'm going to try to stay out of the kitchen while that happens and like again i'll mention i'll have the windows open and how the vents on whatnot but this is a really nice compact motherboard i have to say i mean of course it's only the atom processor so you don't need a, a big heat sink or anything for it um so it's nice and compact but it doesn't matter how small it is. If it's not working for us, it's not going to do me anything at all. Uh, I did mention the other video, and I'll say real quick. Uh, this has a SATA connection over here, but it also has another connection over here. And I said that there were two different IDE buses in BIOS, and one of them the hard drive was hooked up to, and I didn't know what the other one was. Uh, on the other side of the board, which is still in the case, there's another one of these connectors, and that's where they actually have the Wi-Fi card connector. Now, sometimes these are PCIe, sometimes they're M.2, sometimes they're SATA connections. You know, it depends on how this motherboard's set up. This particular one, I'm not really sure how they're using it, but there may be a way we could actually buy an SSD for that if, if again, this thing actually works. But we'll worry about that way later on once we know this thing's doing what we want to do. But we'll take these labels off as well. I may even take these little foam pieces off here as well. And here's our prepped board. I even decided to take the heat sink and fan off the thing. And really isn't much of a heat sink, honestly. It's just a little piece of aluminum with a thermal pad on it and a fan attached to it. Um, so, yeah. But anyway, I decided to take all that off just in case. You can see our little itty-bitty tiny Atom processor. 
like I said, it's a cute little motherboard. Probably something you can attach to the back of a monitor if you really wanted to and turn it into an all-in-one computer, but it's not the focus of this video. The focus is just throwing this thing in the oven, letting it bake, and see what happens. So like I said, we're going to put it in for 8 minutes, 385 degrees Fahrenheit. I'm going to sit there for the 8 minutes and bake. When it's done, I'm going to shut the oven off, let it set for 20 minutes. We'll come back afterwards and see what happens. Wish me luck. Now that I've given the board ample time to actually cool down, it's time to get this all put back together. You can see I've already put it into place. There's actually only one screw holding it in here. The rest of the screws come in when you put the top piece down. Uh, also, don't forget to re-solder the battery in place. So I'll take care of that. And uh, also, there's all these different sizes of screws with this particular device. Uh, I've taken this thing and put it together so many times now. Uh, I kind of remember where they all go by heart. And now comes the moment of truth. Uh, I'm very nervous right now. Uh, I'm expecting nothing, but I'm hoping for something. So without any delay, let's push the power button in. And it does light up. The fan kicked in. And... Holy crap, the screen's working. Amazing. Okay, now it's saying that... Uh, uh, yeah, well, there's no operating system on it, so that's the message we're getting right now, which is what we expected. I actually took this hard drive and completely wiped it um, in between the last video and this one. As a matter of fact, I plugged it into a computer and actually had it write zeros to the drive multiple times just to completely eliminate any data on it and also eliminates any chance of recovery. Um, but I should be able to do Control-Alt-Delete here, and hopefully we can push F2 and get into System BIOS. Yeah, the only thing is the screen's a little dim. Uh, I'm not sure if that's something we can fix by turning up the brightness here or if that's something else that's going on. Yeah, it doesn't seem to be responding to brightness here. It is visible. I'll turn my light off here and, and show you. There is definitely something up on the screen. It's just not that bright. But it is there. So yeah, it seemed that baking the motherboard actually worked. Uh, strange, very, very strange that this thing had so many issues with it, or at least we tried to fix it in multiple ways and none of them worked, and baking it was the last thing to actually work. Uh, I'm not super duper concerned about the screen not working uh, in full brightness, actually, because uh, in reality, I can just leave this as a desktop machine and just keep it plugged into a monitor. I mean, I know that defeats the purpose of having it being mobile. Um, but other than that, I mean, you can see it. I mean, I can I can certainly zoom into the screen. It is readable. It's just it's not that bright. And to be honest, I don't really remember how bright it was to begin with. So uh, maybe that's something we'll have to play around with. But yeah, I'm very, very shocked that that actually worked. Uh, I was really just hoping this thing was just... Uh, I wouldn't say hoping it was go wasn't going to work. I, I just wanted to be done with it. You know, I, I wanted to be able to say... It didn't work. Oh, well, I tried everything I could. Off to the bin it goes. You know, we'll recycle it. But, hey, it's working, right? So, uh, I, I don't think at this point I'm, I'm going to put any money into it. I'm not going to go buy a larger piece of RAM. I'm not going to buy an SSD. Uh, unless, of course, something magical happens and I manage to get the brightness back up on this thing. I don't think it's worth the while. Uh, this is the 750 gigabyte hard drive in here, though. And I still would like to look at the uh, manual, at least the specs, and find what that actual uh, extra uh, slot in here is for. If I could use it as uh, an SS, you know, a SATA style SSD, and just plug it into that port and be fine. But if it's, uh, you know, if it's PCI or if it's uh, one of those other ports, you know, th that may still work for an SSD connection. But not sure exactly. Uh, I'm just happy that I have something up on the screen right now because this thing was definitely eating at me But who's to say it's going to last long, you know, so I guess uh, I Guess we'll leave this we'll put it on the back burner for now, and we'll figure out what to do with it. I Did have one idea. I'm sure a lot of my longtime subscribers will agree with me on this one I think what we may be able to do and it would probably require quite a bit of hacking and, you know, I might not be able to do it at all, but maybe somebody out there can tell me otherwise. What if this didn't work? 
but we still had a known working monitor. Could I take something like a Raspberry Pi Zero and adapt the cable in this to HDMI somehow and embed the Raspberry Pi into this? Uh, I know this keyboard probably isn't uh, a USB keyboard, but there might be a way we could use this shell to house something like that, a mini computer of sorts, where we could just replace the motherboard with that, with, with that unit and use it as a mobile hacked computer, essentially. I, I'm sure there's a way of doing it. Uh, and I, I will mention, I do have a lot of these LCD panels lying around from either monitors that went bad, uh, like the power supply died on it, or from laptops where I just disposed of the motherboard, but I kept the monitor because I knew it worked. And there's actually a seller on eBay that you give them the model number of the actual screen. It's on a little sticker on the back side of this. And they will find you a driver board that'll work with it. And you can use that driver board to input DVI, HDMI, and VGA, which is neat. Um, that's actually useful because you can take an older monitor, which only has a DVI input, for example, and bring HDMI into it with that new driver board. And it has a, a power board and everything to power the... Uh, the actual backlight in this. You need a special inverter to do that. And you would be able to use that uh, with speakers. So you can actually embed speakers into a monitor and you know send your audio over the HDMI cable into that new driver board and use it like a new monitor. And I have a few of those lying on my shelf here and I've been toying around the idea of doing that. And it doesn't seem like it's an expensive venture. So we may actually do that. But I'm wondering if you could do something like that with these smaller ones like this. And like I said, put a little uh, board in it. Well, I don't really have anything more to do on this at the moment. Uh, I'm probably gonna tinker around with it behind the scenes and see if I can get this brightness to come up. So there may be a follow-up video on it in the future. Uh, it's been it's been a fun few days trying to figure this all out. I hope you guys learned something. Uh, if you like these kind of videos and you're not already a subscriber, please subscribe to the returning subscribers. Hey, thanks again for coming back, and we'll see you guys next video. And as a quick little ending, I managed to get the brightness back up. The controls just weren't uh, responding in BIOS. I had to do it from outside of BIOS, so we're good to go.